Hi, my name's Mandy. Today I am participating in the project A Gift to November, which is facilitated by Alison from So Like Dotty and Adam from Adam Sews. So every day in November, a sewing vlogger has either already or will be uploading a vlog to showcase their ideas and makes for gifts. Yesterday it was Karen from So Little Time and today it's myself and Marissa the Umbrian Sewist. You can also get involved on Instagram. I'm not going to talk too much about that but there are plenty of prizes up for grabs. It is a random draw. I'll pop a link in down below to Alison's launch video which explains all about this project. Okay, so let's get on with my first make, which is a pyjama case. So this is the pyjama case, which is where you keep your nightwear. So in the morning, after you've made your bed, you can either slip this under your pillow or keep it on the outside of your bed. So I used a tutorial on YouTube by Debbie Shaw. It was for a laptop case. I rejigged the pattern. I haven't got any buttons as closure or the fasteners. Because I didn't think it needed one. I will put the link to that particular tutorial in the description box down below. So for the outside fabric I used Osnaberg. This is like a linen look fabric. It's unbleached and it usually retails sterling five to seven pounds a metre. It's commonly known as poor man's linen. So I'll just bring the fabric up a little bit closer so you can see that it really does look like linen. The lining is from Stash. So this is an Andover fabric. It's created by Editor Sitar of Laundry Basque Quilts. And I think the pattern's called Ring Bearer. And I thought the colours complemented the Osnaberg fabric. So let's talk about the actual embroidery. So I have a subscription to Readly and I get access to the magazine called Love Embroidery. This was issue number 33. 2022. So in the actual magazine there was a skill section, it's called the skills workshop and the pattern is by Amy Burt who's an embroidery artist and she calls this mini winter trees. She actually shows you how to embroider, there's actual pictorial diagrams and the branches are embroidered using the thorn stitch. And then I used a gold metallic thread by DMC for the French knots. So my embroidery threads are pulled from stash. So we use this brown one for the trunks of the trees. And then this lovely, it's like an aubergine purpley colour for the branches on the bigger winter trees and the pale blue on the smaller ones and then this lovely gold thread um, again it's DMC for the French knots my second make is the spotter tea saucer pattern so this is a pattern by Jasmine Russell from Linen Bouquet she has an Etsy shop and I do like to support small businesses and I thought this was quite a novel idea for a gift. She also has uploaded some videos on how to assemble the project. So this is mine. I have slightly adapted this pattern to accommodate the larger tea bag. So I have made a pouch, just a simple pouch. I've embroidered the T on the back, although I would have preferred that to be more central, but never mind. And I've used again the little winter tree motif. 
so you can pop your tea bag in there and this is the saucer and as you can see i've used the same fabrics as the pajama case because i'm hoping to put this in there so i'll show you what it looks like with the teacup on so yeah i think that's a really pretty gift to make and i'll explain a little bit more about it. i've used the same fabric that i made the pajama case out of and the back of the saucer is the same as the lining so i have secured the cord to the saucer in a couple of places just with a couple of stitches just so that it was more stable i thought it would be a nice touch to use the same pattern of the winter tree as on the pajama case so it all matches and yeah i'm really pleased with my little saucer so on the main pattern the center of the saucer is made of white cotton i used a white wool felt and then i embroidered with my sewing machine the blanket stitch around the edge to secure it my third gift is the good old hot water bottle cover i think this is a very practical gift especially in today's climate when we have rising prices for energy and a lot of people are turning to the use of hot water bottles so i wanted to make the cover in the same fabric as the other two gifts and i wanted to embroider this motif on the front however i didn't have enough osnaberg fabric left unfortunately so i'll have to wait till next week when i can get my hands on some more however i'm going to show you four other covers that i have made basically i just make a bag for the hot water bottle cover i have used in the past patterns where you make the hot water bottle shape and it is a pillowcase style however i find it quite difficult to get the cover over the top of the hot water bottle because they're made of rubber and yeah it can sort of stick to the lining so it can be quite tough to get that top over the bottle the other thing you need to make sure when you're making these covers is that you measure your hot water bottle while it's got water inside it because the hot water bottle will expand when when water's in there so yeah you need to get a true measurement all I do is measure my hot water bottle width ways and add on seam allowances and I also make the length a little bit longer than the actual hot water bottle so the top will come here that is so I can open and close my cover I leave my hot water bottle in there and I just fill it up and empty it with the cover still on the other thing I would say, I mean, this is just the the bag, a plain, this is just um, the principles of bag making, really. But I would suggest that you somehow stitch the lining at the bottom to the, to the top cover because the lining will invariably pull out if you wish to take your hot water bottle out. So, yeah, I'll explain show you these in a little bit more detail so like i say i like to use a button closure on mine so i can get easy access to the hot water bottle this button is from my mum's stash and the lace was also from my mum's stash so yeah a couple of little keepsakes there for my daughter The fabric is lovely and soft as well. It is um, a flannel fabric. And I just think that makes the hot water bottle even more cosier. So yeah, I'm really pleased with this little make. 
The second that water bottle cover is also made with a flannel fabric and I have quilted this with a contrasting cotton using um, free motion quilting. And I think again, this ribbon is from my mum's stash. So I thought I would pop that on. And I've also sewn some little hearts. I've put some lace on first and then I've put the strip of gingham hearts on. And again, I've attached two buttons this time. Thought to make it a little bit different. And a contrasting brown colour. So this hot water bottle, again, it's a bag, but I thought I would make it in a more traditional style. So I have rounded the corners. I think I just used a dinner plate, to be honest, as a template. And I've lined it with this cream fabric. And then I've vegged it with a red ribbon. Which matches the tying ribbon. So yeah. Once you tie it. Uh, tie the ribbon. You get more of a traditional shape of the hot water bottle. You need to ensure that where you fix the ribbon to the back of the hot water bottle it needs to be in line with the neck of the actual bottle i have quilted this using a gold color thread and i've used a pattern for cross hatching so this just goes to show how versatile this gift can be so this is a cover I made my partner oh, quite a long time ago now. He's a keen angler, so I made it, I purchased some fabric with fish on. And used a wooden button from my stash. Again, this project is so good for using up those stash buttons and it's still got its hot water bottle in. So as you can see, it is easy access. I also use wadding or batting inside. So it's a quilt sandwich, really. So if you don't quilt, you don't have to uh, quilt the cover. You can just still use the batting um, inside the lining and the outer fabric and secure it with um, a hem at the top. And like I say, as long as you leave some space at the top so that you can close your cover. So thank you for watching and thank you to Alison and Adam for co-hosting this project. And tomorrow you can look forward to watching Judy and her YouTube channel is Running So and So and Janine from Janine Sews. Until I see you next time, bye. Mm -hmm.